Your history class didn't tell you everything. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about the pilgrims. Number one, saints and strangers. About a third of the pilgrims on the Mayflower were religious separatists, known as saints. The rest were known as strangers. These were passengers traveling to America for better social status or economic opportunities. There were also two other types of passengers, hired men under contract to work in the colony for one year, and indentured servants bound to hard labor for seven years in exchange for food, clothing, and shelter, but no pay. The saints were in command of Plymouth, causing friction with the Anglican majority. One thing the saints and strangers had in common was that they were poor. Number two, a rock in Plymouth. Visitors to Plymouth can see the legendary Plymouth Rock that every American school kid learns about. But it's just a rock. No pilgrim ever mentioned landing on a boulder. The legend of the rock started more than 100 years later, in 1741, when a 95-year-old elder of Plymouth's church claimed that his father, who was not one of the pilgrims, told him this was the rock the pilgrims landed on. So just like most legends, the myth of Plymouth Rock was founded on scant historical evidence. Number three not men in black. The classic image of the pilgrim shows them wearing black from head to foot, but they actually dressed in a variety of colors. Black attire was for Sunday and special occasions, but forget about those buckles on their hats. Those never existed. Number four, no natives invited to Thanksgiving. The Pilgrims survived their first year in Plymouth due to the aid of the local Wampanoag Confederacy. They gave thanks to God in October with a three-day harvest feast, that good old first Thanksgiving. But they didn't invite any of the locals. We can assume the three native inhabitants of Plymouth were there, Squanto, Hobomok, and Hobomok's wife. After hearing gunshots, Massasoit did show up with about 100 warriors, and when they saw the feast, they brought some venison and decided to stay. Number five. Pilgrims canceled Christmas. The groundwork for building Plymouth began on December 25th, 1620. This meant nothing to the saints because they did not celebrate Christmas, rejecting it as a human invention from Roman times. Jesus didn't celebrate his own birth, so why should they? Their leader, John Robinson, wrote that December 25th was definitely not his real birthday. And why celebrate the birth of Christ and not, let's say, the circumcision? Number six. Religious freedom before America. Most people think the pilgrims went to America for religious freedom, but they enjoyed practicing their faith in Holland for 12 years before this. However, there were lots of reasons they wanted to leave, which included, but are not limited to, a declining congregation, war coming soon to Holland, a desire to preach in the wilderness, their children being tempted by sin, their children turning Dutch, and fear of losing their English identity. Number seven. Plymouth was not legit. The Pilgrims had secured a patent from King James to settle in the Virginia Company's territory, south of 41 degrees. But for reasons of their own, they settled at 42 degrees, just outside Virginia's claim, which meant their patent was invalid. To prevent a rebellion among the settlers, the leaders acted fast, writing the Mayflower Compact, declaring a right to form their own civil government. Plymouth was still illegitimate, though, until a new patent was secured by their investors. Even still, the Pilgrims forever lacked the authority of the King's Seal, unlike their neighbor, the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Ever-struggling Plymouth was eventually swallowed by Massachusetts in 1691. Number 8. Pilgrim Communists? The Pilgrims used economic communism for the first two and a half years in Plymouth, sharing all goods in common. This system was instilled by their investors in England, who demanded all profits from the colony's first seven years. The Pilgrims hated this system because they valued individual property and prosperity. The stronger settlers didn't think it was fair that they should work the hardest for no personal gain. Governor Bradford ended the commune system in 1623, gave settlers their own lots to farm, and saw the crop surplus grow. Number 9. Savages, Savages What is a savage? It's an aggressive word, but it comes from the Latin term for forest dweller. Savage became the universal English term for Native Americans, as opposed to the Spanish term Indians. But during the 1620s, savage became derogatory. Instead of denoting woodland societies, it was used to label natives as wild, violent, fierce, primitive, uncivilized, and ungodly. By current definition, a savage is a brutal or vicious person. Ironically, such traits fit the New England colonies, whose ruthless militaries massacred innocent native civilians to spread terror. 
Killing women and children was virtually unknown in Northeast America until Dutch and English settlers showed them what it meant to be savage. Number 10, Killing Billington. The first Englishman to be executed in New England was a pilgrim named John Billington. John started making trouble before they even landed in America, taking part in a failed mutiny on the Mayflower. In 1621, he cursed off Captain Standish, but begged his way out of harsh punishment. In 1624, he was involved in yet another mutiny and survived it. Finally, in 1630, after murdering a rival, he was hanged. 